All right, I'm going to make a six pound nozzleless black powder rocket from start to finish. I'm going to take a little mother's swipe on my spindle this time. We are using 751510 black powder fuel. Oh, let's see, we should set the pressure. Let's see what we got here. We're pressing these at 10,000 pounds of force, which is around 5,000 pounds on the comp, somewhere in there. So, tube on, support in. Here's what we've been doing lately. cheating on mine. I created bolts for the bottom so I can bolt my base to the support and keep my spindle perfectly straight. It helps with this grabby fuel. It pulls on the tube and bounces the tube up and down. So this keeps that spindle from moving and stops that bounce. These are wax tubes. We're making some rockets for winter blast. Trying to store them a bit. This is uh, the new press table, slide table here. And I have an alignment jig in the back that makes these pretty quick to make. I scoop my fuel, I scoop on the six pounders, I scoop my fuel on either side. And as you see, if your fuel's right and you use the right implements, you should be able to just grab the rammers and pull them out, not have to fight them. two tablespoons per increment. So this fuel has been 2% wet and then puck in a comet pump and ran back through a screen. And it's just a nice non-dusty green. It's kind of dense. Not much to say when you're making big six pounder rockets, stick your hammer in and make sure you get the stuff off the edges or you'll lock your hammer in against your spindle. I did that earlier today. It's pretty irritating. We've been busy around the pyro shop. Trying to get rid of wires. Trying to get much too in there for the pyro. I think you can hear wind in the background. Making some noise with paper, making some cylinder shells. So, making cases. Almost ready to change rammers on this one. I guess the last one. Already, as you can see, there's a little wax buildup. 
too, Blake. Oh, my hammer. That's all right. I'm going to wipe right off. With the proper tools. These six pound things to come with everyday work easily done. We're going to put a little bit of ferro tie up top when we get past the spindle, create a little tail. As for the other different presses we make, we do make a, this is the 10 ton tall. It's what I've been using lately because I want to be big. This big six pound tall tooling. And we did star plates for them the other day. And then we make a little six ton, either tall or short. And you can still press six pounders on that six ton tall. Since we're only using 10,000 pounds right now, and then we make a giant 15 ton. But I'm not nearly as excited to it. It's a little slower and heavier. I think I'm going to make a shorter plate press only. I don't know. Really Just with a little more workspace for a bigger start plate, maybe. Truthfully, I like this 10 ton one. It does everything we need it to do from corn powder or puck powder to make these rockets. All our star plates quick. Almost to the end of this round. I know how long it takes for one of these rockets. I haven't timed them yet. I'm not going super fast. This is just normal, normal pressing. We'll pass that one again. These are nice little grammars. They help to pull them easier. They got holes drilled through them. So it doesn't create a vacuum while you're pressing. So we get through this rammer and then we'll be above the spindle. Hopefully we'll have some flights of these with some nice headers for winter blast. If all goes well along with some other neat ball shells and cylinder shells. screen it. But the Dave Forrester turned me on to it and I can't stop doing it that way. I just like the, the no puff mess. We get a little granules that pop out but nothing like dry powder. And as you notice I do use tube supports that are solid all the way to the top. I don't like the, the inset for the tube extender. I think it creates more mess than it solves. If I get a little powder around the top of these, I just 
shove it in with my finger. And if I want to get clear to the top, if your fuel is dense, you can just do some baby scoops up there and then you can go clear to the end of the spindle, or clear to the end of the tube. scoops here and it'll put us above the spindle nicely. Now I'm going to start sprinkling in a little ferro tie. Give us just a little tail. exactly where we want them to be. That way I can run without a whole head. You can figure all that stuff out, make one and go test it, figure it all out beforehand, or you can just do them like this and then drill them back a little bit. So much faster, and we haven't tore up any tore up any threads yet. this off. This is the way I do 99% of my motors. And that's a finished six pound nozzleless 